Hi, I'm Jen, and we've been taking a look at what love is from 1 Corinthians 13. And today we're going to be talking about verse 6, which says, It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Uh, another translation says, Love does not delight in evil or in righteousness, but rejoices with the truth. And recently this verse just came to a head for me and was very helpful in a situation I faced. My husband and I live in an HOA community where we are supposed to follow certain rules and regulations, and one of which is regarding our parking. And we received a letter in the mail that was essentially from the HOA and accusing us of parking one of our vehicles where we were not allowed to park and that it had been observed by one of our neighbors that we were doing so. Well, instantly we knew which car the letter was referring to because we had noticed it ourselves. It had been sitting there like two months and was covered in dust. And we also had a pretty good idea which neighbor it was that had observed us parking our vehicle there. And Really, I just wanted to march right over there and give that neighbor a piece of my mind. But thankfully, my devotional that morning had been a reminder of who my real enemy is in situations where I am facing false accusation or when I am offended or when I am hurt by people. It's really the enemy of my soul Satan in that moment that is trying to tear me down, trying to get me to turn towards a mean response, an unkind response. And Paul reminds us of this in Ephesians 6, 12, when he says, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So here it is. When we choose to follow Jesus in these moments, rather than our sin nature, Jesus is glorified and truth wins. So I went over to my neighbor next door and I just honestly and openly asked if they knew whose car that was and it instantly became apparent to them that it wasn't ours since I was asking them about it. We got into a conversation about what to do next and how to figure out what to do to solve the situation. And I walked away from that conversation honestly very, very grateful that I hadn't gone the route that I wanted to go. I didn't have any regrets for how I had handled the conversation and what I had said. And I think it's really important that we recognize that our words matter and we have a choice. Are we going to choose evil and unrighteousness or are we going to choose to let God's truth shine in those moments? And I think it's, it, it is important that we see how Paul ends Ephesians 6 after he reminds us who our real enemy is. He gives us a direct challenge almost to think about our words in those moments. He goes into reminding us to put on all the pieces of spiritual armor and to emphasize the very high importance of prayer in our lives. But then in verse 19 he says, Pray that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. You know, one of the biggest mysteries of the gospel and the things that makes it stand out in this fallen world is how we offer grace and kindness instead of hatred in response to our enemies. We're challenged by Jesus to love our enemies and to pour out favor on them. And that is what stands out. And people notice when we respond that way. And then truth wins. God is glorified and 
his difference in our life is noted and we shine brightly the love and the transforming work that he does in our lives that they need just as much as we've needed so be encouraged today and remember to let truth win in all those moments that we face in life take care and we'll talk to you next time